Hey guys, it's Harry Taboo. And in this video, I want to talk about the concept of getting more battlegrounds in BDO. And if you like this, you know, please like it, subscribe, etc. But you know what? If you've got any ideas on this, what we're talking through, please comment about it because, you know, these things won't happen unless we have an open dialogue. So, hey, let's put it out there and let's talk. So, in this video, I'm going to chat about really five main key areas. I'm going to just talk about the general state of what the world PvP is in general. Obviously, I'm only saying what my point of view is, and obviously, you know, this is to do with the EU. Though I've got a funny feeling that's going to be similar in NA and with the other areas as well. Uh, the state of Red Battlefield, because at the end of the day, it's a video talking about Battlegrounds, so let's talk about the one we've got. Um, we're going to talk about what we could have for PvP rewards, because at the end of the day, you know, you need to reward players for doing it. Yes, it is fun, but at the end of the day, you know, without the rewards, people just won't do it. And if you have good rewards, good incentivization, more people will come. And that's kind of what I think we're going to need, but we'll get into that. We're then going to talk about ideas for Battlegrounds, which BDO could put in. And I'm not going to lie, most of this is going to be pretty much ripped from other games, of course, because if someone else has done it, why reinvent the wheel when we could actually just sort of almost copy and paste? And then we'll go over some general issues, what I think could happen going forward. So let's talk about the state of world PvP in general at the moment. And I think a lot of people would sort of agree here. There's a bit of an issue coming through now where... You've got a couple, you know, you've got, say, two major groups of people, or say three. You've got the, the hardcore, the people with, you know, 650 gear score. Then you've got the a general population who I'm not going to even mention a gear score here, but we'll just say, you know, the soft cap plus. And then you've got all the new players. Now, keep in mind, when we're talking about, you know, world pvp this is you know, people fighting for spot and i personally really hate this whole duel for spot thing i get it when it comes to places like ackman hysteria uh places where if you die you get like ported out and i get that because that's a real pain um but one of the beauties about bdo for me at the start was you know you just turn up and if you want something you flag you know you flagged up and you, you fought for it and that was kind of like, that was such a big thing for me. That was so fun. And it, that's what brought more people in. Now, the issue is, and I get why they've done it, with obviously the karma system, of course, you know, if you kill someone who it, you really out gear, you lose, you know, so much karma that you can only really do it three times before your negative karma. And then there are obviously the penalties. And of course, you can take the risk and go out and kill people and go red and run the risk of dying. But, you know, the penalties for doing that are so high, so severe, but I think that should be a different video altogether. Um, but because of that, though, it's made world PvP a little bit stagnant because, you know, everyone expects now for this, you know, well, we would you for spot? And I get the concept of it, that's fine. But, you know, the missing the days of going in and, you know, having these big skirmishes. But half the problem with that is obviously this big gear gap. So, there's probably a video there too. I should probably write some of these down. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's generally the issue going forward here, you know, with this gear gap as, you know, as well as obviously, you know, people going around and just doing their thing. So, yeah, world PvP can be a little bit stagnant. Now, don't get me wrong, when you have like GVGs out, that can be a lot more fun. You know, when you've got a lot of people who want to come out and have a, you know, good laugh and, you know, help you fight. But these days, if people grind, it seems like if they lose a spot or you try and get a duel, uh, or you have bring a guild war type thing, you know, they'll stay for five minutes, get bored, and whoever's losing just goes. You know, there's not this whole big fights anymore. And I know at the top guilds, um, they're a lot more sort of like on this sort of thing. So for the siege guilds, obviously, they want to protect their rep and stuff. And I know there are obviously smaller PvP guilds that will also be the same. But, you know, in general, it just feels like world PvP is sadly, it's not dying, but it just feels stagnant. And, uh, you know, the comm system doesn't help with that. Anyway. So that's going to be the basis of the concept of having a more battlegrounds. Now, obviously, it's one of two things that can happen here. People will say, yes, more battlegrounds means that more people are going into them, in theory, means less open world PvP. But obviously, as we've seen, Kakao isn't necessarily looking to change how open world PvP you know, works. And I get that, to be fair, because there'd be nothing more off-putting for a new player coming to the game than someone, you know, with a 650 gear score just literally sneezing and taking out a whole group of, you know, th this this chap and, you know, his five friends all messing around and then this one guy comes, sneezes and kills everyone. You know, that's not going to be fun and that's not going to make those guys want to play more. So I get why that could be an issue. So this is why I think we need to do something about Battlegrounds. So 
let's look at the state of the BDO battleground at the moment. And yes, sadly, after what? How long has this game been out now for? I want to say three plus years. God, it's, it feels like forever. Um, we still only have the one battleground or one official battleground. I know there's the arena and all that sort of stuff, but one battleground, RBF, uh, you know, red battlefield. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I really enjoy getting into RBFs, but let's just have a look at something quickly on the screen now. So I just logged in a few minutes ago and just took this photo to see, you know, how many people were queuing. Now look at those numbers. This is considering, you know, this is a fairly, it's not obviously, a, you know, it is a decent sized game, but you know, it's not like games like WoW, etc. with obviously their millions of subs. But at the end of the day, that's not many people going into Battlegrounds and there's, you know, there's a good reason for it. So, you know, you could look at it as saying the rewards, you know, the reward 200 energy is, is really nice if you're going to go life skilling. For the people that don't like life skilling and just want to PVP all the time, you know, it's not that great. Yes, you can get your, you know, your your crystal reward or your red battlefield tokens, you know, five for the win, one for the loss. Uh, is it five or three now? Oh, God, it feels like forever again. But the point is, you know, you can only get that to get, you know, crystals for your gear. Now, in games, I think to have really good PvP rewards, you need to have something which is, you know, it shows that you're doing it. But like I said, I'm going to talk about the reward concept in a minute. But just look, this is the problem that we have with RBF. And the the thing that just I think is hilarious, and it's such a it's so bad that Kakao still lets go on for so long. Look at the capped RBF. <laughs> you know those those requirements now, even for new players. You know it just seems so so silly. They're so easily you know easily got. But even if you did get to that level, there's no one in them, so you'd just be sitting there waiting. So there just seems to be no point in having those limits. Now, fair enough, if you were to go in and have like the tier one mentality, where if you joined it and then your gear got scaled down, that would be a different thing. And I think more people would come in for that. But, you know, let's let's sum it up. Really, the RBF situation, it's fine. You know, you, you will always get a, you know, a, an R, you know, you will get into an RBF. But realistically, you're either in... The, the one which is normally has 60 people, if you you know, if, if it's on a popular time, there'll always be the six people in. And then the second one will have, you know, 25, 30, maximum 40. And there's never a third one going off. Or if it is, it's because some people have randomly gone there. And that is obviously, that's the worry. And that just shows that there's a bit of a disconnect here. People aren't finding it fun. Or they go in, do the one for the daily reward and stop. So with that in mind, let's just have another little think here. So what is the issue? Well, again, let's go back <laughs> to the gear. The, the gear thing is a huge problem. You know, you get people going in with 650 gear and you know what, that, that's great that they've got it. And there's no, I don't like this thing of going, oh, you know, they shouldn't go in, they've got too much gear. Definitely not, they, you know, they've worked for it. But at the same time, as much as it's not fun for people with, you know, the lower gear score who are getting one shot, it can't be that fun for the people with the 650 gear. Yeah, for the first 10 minutes, you know, you've got your EP and going, oh, yeah, you know, I've killed everyone. But then it's like, oh, okay, great. Now, the other issue is, and I think this is like, it's just how RBF works. It's not rewarding to an extent to play as a team, which sounds silly, but bear with me. Think, your individual score is based on last hits. So if you're a shy, forget it. So you're going to go and you're going to have zero score. Now, obviously, score is not everything, but it's nice to get rewarded for things. But because obviously it's all about last hits, it's not necessarily always a great indicator of skill, of course. And that's a bit of an issue. And some people don't like that. Some people, you know, don't get me wrong, some people love it because they're going around, you know, you get your 1K points and plus, and, you know, you're big, bright and red, and it's fantastic, and you've got the animations. You know, I find it fun. I like it. But then... You know, you want more team things. And if you look at games which are doing it better, it's because they put a bit more objectives in. And sadly, the objective of RBF is very simple. Which team gets most points, you know, on their team's win? But it's all done off, you know, <laughs> the people with the most kills. One hits. And at a point where we've got such high AP, people do get one hit quite easily. So it is worth thinking that this is probably now why it's not so fun. Or not so fun for a lot of people. And there's some people that are always in there. Yep. But then that means there's so many people that don't go in there. So, and I know I've sort of like... <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've almost gone into it, which was the next slide. But I'll probably combine it into one, which was what what is wrong with RBF? 
and ultimately nothing is wrong but at the same time you know like i said everything because variety is the spice of life <laughs> let's just say that but there's no variety in it it's all about last hits no, not i mean team play will help you if you can go in and you play as a team it will be better but it doesn't promote it, it doesn't promote team play and you know gear dependency is very important so there are definitely things that they could do to help this or you know get rid of these horrible capped ones that they're just they're just pointless i don't know why they're there i've never seen them for i mean i've, I've never seen anyone in them recently you know for a long time but I've never seen them, never seen one fall. Now, if you put a tier one cap on, or if like, you know, you've got three there, do the T1 easy, medium, hard. Now, the nice thing about that is people who want to play around with their gear could test it. You know, the people that go, right, I've got this AP, so let's start putting on human damage accessories and taking off some AP. So I'm still getting my AP elsewhere, but I'm also stacking human damage. At least that'll be somewhere where they can try it and it will just make it a bit more fun. In the EU, I can safely say there are a lot more people doing the tier one nodes, and obviously that's nothing to do with the reward because the reward for them are absolutely terrible. But it's because they're fun, they're you know more balanced as such. But you can get a better team fight, and that's just you know hands down why. And that's slightly worrying, but um, you know hey, what can you do? So that is in my mind the state of RBF, and like I said, I put it into one slide so it's easier. So. One of the things I've said about the issues with obviously having battlegrounds and RBF is rewards. And again, I feel like not having decent rewards never promotes people to do it. And yes, you know, there's two ways looking at, oh, you shouldn't be promoted, you know, you shouldn't have to get rewarded to do everything you want to do. But at the end of the day, look at Shadow Arena. A lot of people did Shadow Arena because it was so, it gave so many good materials. It was, you know, you got a lot of money per hour for doing it. Now I did it. I tried so hard to get into it, but I just found it tedious. But I, I wanted to get into it. But I wanted to get in for, for two reasons. One, because at least it was something different. So it put a change in the mix, which was nice. But more importantly as well, you're getting decent rewards. I'm not being funny, you know, 20 minutes to do a battleground, you get your couple of million from winning and you get, you know, your seals so you can get crystals. I mean, it's not worth it. As in your, your money per hour, it's just not worth it. Not when you can go grind or gather I mean you know gathering is an easy 100 mil an hour without huge mastery when you get large mastery I said two words there, you know you're getting 150 200 mil an hour it's crazy so yeah it's not a surprise that people don't really want to do it or only do it once to get that 200 energy because for life skills 200 energy is a lot of money so let's have a look at some things which you know could work for battlegrounds now keep in mind I'm saying this with the idea of other battlegrounds as well potentially coming through, if that was to ever happen, what you could get. So the first one, titles. Uh, everyone loves a title, an interest title. I remember when they first brought out the Siege titles where, you know, you had your glowing name and uh, I know people can still get them now. They're cool. I like it. It's stuff like that. People love. It's something unique. This is why so many people do the event titles when they come out to get a slightly different colour title. It is so weird, but people love that stuff. Now, of course, don't make it permanent. And the only reason I say that is because you want people to come back again. Make it last 24 hours. Make it last a week. Probably a week's better, a week or a month. And, you know, you could buy it, for instance, with crystals or you get certain scores or whatever. Yeah, go out with, you know, reward tokens. That would be fun. That would be cool because at the end of the day it's something unique and it's a bit of a swag factor and it doesn't have to be one title you could get several you could get a title which meant you almost have to pvp for like you know <laughs> a week solid to get enough uh, you know reward tokens to get it ultimate swag title people love that have it glowing shining you know make it seem like you're super saiyan or you've gone ultra instinct go mad but that's cool that's something different and you know it doesn't affect the game economy at all but people will love it so what else could we do cosmetic outfits again have something which could go over your normal outfit now what i would say in this i still think it should give you all the buffs of an actual costume but again time gate it now this is a hard one because you don't want to do something which is going to take away from you know cacao's money income of course because it's a business so they're not going to do something that bad so you could have one of two things. It could be something which they could make an extra slot for, which you just put it on and you still have your costume and it just goes over the top of it. Now this way you could have a couple of different armor sets. Again, making sure they only last for a certain amount of time or something like this, or take a lot to get 
and then just redo them every season or something with slightly different colours. A lot of games do it and it goes down well, but it's something to aim for, it's something fun. So how about if you win, you can buy items similar to how you buy items with no wards. Uh, node wars. <laughs> so think of the concept. If you've won, you know, you've got your 80, 90, 100 seals and you go, right, I want to then get a the equivalent of a tri ogre. I can't think what the guild one's called. Crimson something or other. And that'll last for a week. So yeah, the people that are blown up the gear can still go in there, do something to get these items and have fun. Now there is the other side of this, which I think is much better why not have it so that you could get gear which only lasts for like a week similar to the crimson stuff but you can only use it in battlegrounds so for instance it could be at 10 or uh, tet or pen ranks depending on how many seals you spend now with that that eliminates one of the biggest issues with battlegrounds for people is the the gear issue because the more you play you could have these items then which would work in battlegrounds maybe they're timed you know what maybe even they're not because if it's just for battlegrounds does it really matter probably not you know probably timed for pen at least but for tet i mean a lot of people now are running around with at least you know the tet weapons and one or two tet accessories i'd say the you know probably a good half the player base has got that soft cap so what, what would be the harm in giving people something to work for? So in Battlegrounds, they could pump up their damage, pump up their DP, but only for that. And it doesn't affect open world, doesn't affect grinding, doesn't affect anything else. It's just purely for PvP. And I think that would go down really well. So here we go. Actual decent money. Why don't we have it? So if you win a Battleground, you could get money similar to what you would if you were grinding power. Now, of course, make it so it's more lucrative if you win. Of course, that makes more sense. But, I mean, if you've got three battlegrounds that you can do in an hour, because, you know, say, for instance, you do the full 20 minutes. So, in one hour, I don't think it's much to ask for at least, you know, at least if you're looking at 60 to 80 million. And that is on, I'd say, 60 million is on the lower side to these guys who are grinding properly and, you know, with gear. So what would be the harm in that? Get it up to, you know, 60, 60 mil for losing, 100 mil if, you know, if you win all three, for instance. That would at least make the money worthwhile and a lot more people would go in. And again, the more people that go in, the more it's going to promote the PvP culture in the game. And let's be fair, BDO was sold as a PvP game. So that's something to think about. The last one, which is something that I really like, and again, it's, it is a rip from other games, but why not look at ranked? Ranked Battlegrounds. Now, understandable with RBF, it would be a little bit harder because of the concept. But just imagine you're a guild and you can pitch a team, you know, you'd have to make it smaller. Then maybe you could still do the 30, 30, 30 versus 30. But yeah, imagine that you're pitching team 30. You've got Siege Guild 1 versus Siege Guild 2, both going in with 30 people and then they get a rank. Similar to, you know, how they do their territories and stuff. But hey, 30 versus 30. They all know what they're doing, and that way it promotes the gameplay as well. Now, that would be fun, and that would be interesting, and I think that would make people want to do it. Now, keep in mind, then, you could have smaller guilds that may not want to do Node Wars, but they could come together just to do these ranked battlegrounds. And again, if something is ranked, you know, you get the swag factor of titles and all that sort of stuff. But hey, isn't that fun? I think that would be a cool idea, and definitely something which, if they took, more people would come into the game. Okay, so now for the most interesting part, I think. Let's get some ideas for Battlegrounds. And the way I look at it, there's several different types um, that we're going to look at. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty much going to just jump in and look at World of Warcraft. And the reason why is they've got so many Battlegrounds, they've even changed them now so you can have, you know, you can queue for like small or big ones or epic, I think they call it. They even do special ones for, I don't know how long the events last for, but, you know, it's like a normal Battleground and they just put additional weird things in like, I don't know, like lower gravity or more damage or faster respawns or something like that. Just to, just to give that, you know, variety and keep in mind, variety is what makes people keep wanting to do it. And as far as, you know, for developers it's not necessarily the biggest thing to do to make those changes so there's definitely something there in that now again i still think the concept of some of these battlegrounds would be nice to see some that are potentially capped not necessarily all of them but i think some of them if they capped them they'd just get more people in and again this is the thing which bdo is lacking is you know for that end game for the pvp if you're not sieging 
there's not really any end game PvP, which is a shame. So it's not like in game, you know, other games where you could say, actually, I just want to be a, you know, someone who does lots of battlegrounds because of how RBF works. There's no real thing for it. But anyway, so I'm looking at the potentially being four different styles that they could go down for battlegrounds. So the first is a capture the flag method. And I'm going to go into these a little bit more in a second. Um, the second is a holding the points. The third is an objective based. And the final one I'm seeing is almost like mini node war style. Now this would be exclu you know, exclusively BDO style, which I think is really cool. So let's just jump to the capture the flag. Now, I think this would work quite well because most classes now have got fairly good mobility. Now, keep in mind, you know, off the top of your head, you'd think, oh, actually, yeah, put it on, you know, Maywa, Maywa Musa, uh, even though at the moment there's some classes which seem to you know, outmaneuver even them. But just have it so when you've got the flag, for instance, you know, just like in WoW, it puts a debuff on you. So the person carrying the flag, for instance, may get slower over time. So always what you'd have is, you know, you'd have your battleground, you'd have team one, team two, one flag at one location, one flag at the other, and the other team has to get that flag. But you can only cap it once the other team doesn't have your flag. So that means you have to work together. You have to have people to defend who's picked up your flag, and then you need to have a kill squad who's going to go and get their flag back. Now, to make sure then that this isn't going to get uh, sort of tedious, because keep in mind, the nice thing about this is it, it would reward at least someone in your team to have a DP build. Because if you put your flag on someone with good DP, hopefully they'll take more hash. It would mean that you're more... I don't, wanna, I don't like saying support classes, because obviously support class realistically is shy, but, you know, the people who can support, like, Wishes and Wizards as well with their heels, you know, they could then choose, right, actually, we might need one with the, with the guy who's holding the flag, but also we might need some of the attack squad to keep them going for longer. So that is, you know, that puts something there, and that is already giving a bit more ideas for gameplay. Now, the other thing that's worth noting to make sure it doesn't go for on and you know forever and ever, you also debuffs can be just that the person holding the flag will take more damage because there's nothing worse than someone with you know their million DP and then you know it's going to stand there because they've got shies and witches just keeping them alive forever. There needs to be an, obviously a natural progression, but this is something that other games have done and it's nothing new. It's so simple, and at the end of the day, this is something that I think BDO could put in pretty easy. So yeah, I personally would like this style. I like capture the flag games. I think they're fun. So let's go to the next holding points. I mean, holding points for points. <laughs> it's quite quite simple. You either have one or three points on a map. You always really want it to be an odd number. And at the end of the day, if you're holding it, whether you you physically like you know you take an item or you, you, know, you capture a flag or it's just who's got the most people in it. While you're in it, you get points for your team. And say for instance, first team to get to 100 points or 500 points whatever wins the game and it's quite simple because then you've got the strategy of if you're if you're on they you know you've let the other team have two and you've only got one point you know you're going to outnumber them in theory at one of the points so you have to be a bit clever with where you go and games like this again it's got that bit of strategy and it makes people want to do it and work together as a team and i again i find these really fun and it just puts that extra bit of complexity and a bit of diversity in the pvp situation it's not just so stationary and i hope sorry you keep hearing these bangings i don't know why i'm using my hand so much as usual <laughs> one day i'll do it with a webcam so you can see me just throwing things around but yeah holding point for points i think that's nice and easy now the the third one that i'm going to talk about is objectives and these are a bit interesting and this is something i think bdo could actually do quite easy so the concept of you know each team has objectives and say for instance you have two teams and each team has to go kill four separate bosses before they can kill the end boss of the other team and if you kill their end boss first you know you win it's quite simple and um, but for instance the end boss is ultimately invincible at the start until you've taken down the other bosses or at least has got some major debuffs so you might be able to do it with one of the buffs on sorry major buffs not debuffs you might be able to do it with one of the buffs on but not with the other two you know people who've played wow this is you know the very basic concept of av so this is something that could be done i mean we've got we have rifts bdo are fine at spawning bosses you just have to make it so one team kill one one team kill another you could even reuse models if they really wanted to but again something like this you know, yes, there is a worry that sometimes that these can come, you know, these can become sort of, you know, farmable or, or a bit samey. 
But because of how BDO works and the fact that they've already got so many boss models that they could put in, they could swap and change these quite easily and it could make it quite interesting. And again, you know, with, with certain numbers playing, you know, the best thing about this, the, the thing that really like I love about this, remember the old days when you could PvP during world bosses and if you were at war with another guild at a world boss, you had to do one of two things, either change server or fight. And that was great. I remember that in fact the first time I got a dandy box <laughs> on my tamer back in the day was when we was just PvPing at Karanda and I swear I, I must have, I could only have hit Karanda like a few times but it was doing so much PvP and it was just great because you've got the extra bit of like Ugh! and I think something like that would just make the game, oh I, I loved that, that was amazing. So the last thing that I thought about really was like I said about this mini node war style. Now the, the things I quite like about this concept is it's almost like an introduction to Node Wars. So keep in mind for newer players. Now, this is one where I definitely say this should have a, a like a gear cap on, but have much smaller numbers. So you, you spawn into an area, say, for instance, there's already a base built. So it's not something where you have to make it yourself. It's just a normal base built, potentially even have AIs on the like the flame towers, but make it so structures only have like 20 percent of the normal health. So they can go down quite quick. But again, the idea being that, you know, you want to go in together to try and fight and the first person to take down the other, you know, base wins. Quite simply, just how Node Wars work. But with smaller team sizes and obviously structures that aren't going to last forever, this could be a nice sort of fun, quick Node War style type thing. But it would also be a good introduction for those who are new to the game and have never done a Node War. Or the concept of going in is a bit almost scary. So I think there's definitely something here. You know, you could have two different versions of this as well. Uh, you know, I'm, and this is coming off the fly actually because I'm, I'm sort of looking at my notes and didn't put this down. Where you've got obviously got the two, which is like a standard node war where it's one team versus another team. You could almost have it where, you know, it, one team spawns in as a defense team and one team spawns in as an attacking team. And at the end of the day, you might have a set time. So for instance, you've got to take the base down in 10 minutes. Obviously, keep in mind, you know, all the structures would have to have lower health of course you know to make that possible and at the end of the day if it's a tie it would just be the base that had the lowest health you know lost or the highest health won but something like that again you know you'd have a, almost an NPT champion you'd run in or something and then you'd follow and that's it you know attack and defend and something like that it just introduce people to no wars and get more people in the PvP genre because I just think that's needed so yeah there's what I think about Battlegrounds so Let's talk about issues. Now, the first issue that I'm going to say is, you know, it's same. It's the biggest problem that they had with Shadow Arena. Obviously, hackers. Of course, you're always going to get hackers. Sadly, in the game, the, you know, Kakao doing a good job at, you know, cracking down on them. But it happens when they put these stuff out. So fingers crossed. You know, if they did do this, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be a thing. Now, the other one is, you know, loot being too good or bad. I, I've, you know, I've deliberately done this thing about what loot would need to be. At the end of the day. If it's if you know it should be good, but it shouldn't be bad. Uh, and at the moment, I think it's bad. And the issue is, if it's too good, people will go, "Well, there's no point in grinding. I'd rather do this." And then that does detract from world PvP. So it needs to be pretty decent. Now, let's be fair. Kakao would probably go down the same route as it did with the Shadow Arena, where you get bonus loot if you had a Karma buff active. Now, I think this would work for Kakao because, say, for instance, where we're saying about, you know, they might lose potential sales of outfits or whatever. This is a great way to compensate that. And it's something where it's not necessarily a need, you know, as long as it's not a huge gap from having the buff to not having it, it wouldn't make it too bad. But I definitely think they need to be good rewards in order to make this work. Now, obviously the the main thing, the main issue is it is what the community would do. And I think if you know, if you listen to this and you've thought actually some of these I'd like more battlegrounds, you know. We've just got to come together, really, and just say you know, as much as we can. Not necessarily make noise, because, you know, they'll never really happen anyway. But, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully someone will watch this from uh, the Cacao team. And if it's a positive sort of feedback, then, you know, they might just pass it on and go, oh, actually, look, there's a market for it. At the same time, if you don't like it, then, you know, don't. You know, the best way to show me you don't like it is to hit that like button, ironically. Oof, I take those likes so ironically. <laughs> what a try, hey? But at the end of the day, this could be done. There is no reason why this couldn't be done. It's not above and beyond what Kakao, uh, you know, what BDO has already in the game. You know, all of this is here. It's nothing new. It's nothing special. So 
I would really hope that something like this does happen and you know it happens sort of soon because I know a lot of people have left BDO from my group recently and it is a shame so I'm hoping that if they can do something like this it might bring people back anyway <laughs> I just realized how long it's been going for and I've almost done this in two continuous bits of uh, sound which I'm quite happy with so Thank you very much for watching. I am currently working on the next Succession video because I know I'm a, a slightly behind, but you know, it's Christmas, going back to work, it's all busy and fantastic, of course. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and take care and see you all soon. Bye.